Uh, first of all, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to present uh, about deep tech investments. I, my name is Catherine Chen, and I'm the founder and GP of Radiant Ventures. We are a new fund that's focused on early stage FinTech deep tech vertical SaaS investments. Today, um, my first topic is a deep dive into deep tech. So how do I end up here? Um, started out as a fintech founder, and before that, I was an investment banker, London, New York, Hong Kong. Well, we noticed that there's a more way more investment going into deep tech, covering areas such as space tech, semiconductors, and AI. I started out actually building my company out of Silicon Valley and China. Uh, when we first got started, we were the first cross-border pre-IPO investment firm um, based out of WeChat. So you can now look at various pre-IPO opportunities such as Binance, Airbnb, SpaceX on WeChat. And what we realized is that more and more folks are looking at long term, over 10 years, 20 years period, what are the best investments in this world? That's how we discovered space. We discovered artificial intelligence, robotics, and also next-gen transportation. Over the last two years, we've invested in a company called Navier, which is one of the first electric hydrofoil boat. You can go from cities in San Francisco, Miami, Bahamas, and now we're hoping to take them to the Middle East. What Navier has accomplished is to build this first uh, electric vehicle that helps you uh, fly over the water. In congested cities such as Miami, San Francisco, it would take you hours to go from one side of the island to another. How do we find a new technology that can really change transportation for the masses. Secondly, we also have investing a company um, that basically now is producing a new generation eight nanometer chip that hopefully will power the demand for the next generation generative AI chips. What we've noticed is that with the dependence on NVIDIA type of chips, there's a need for a company that's building a faster, stronger chip. However, where do you find that talent? Uh, we've noticed that historically, many of the founders have come from Taiwan. But with what's going on in US and China, we would like to find founders that are actually leveraging existing talents in places such as East, Eastern Europe and also South Korea. So today, with Furiosa.ai, they're leveraging uh, hundreds and hundreds of engineers coming from Samsung and Hynix, which are the largest memory makers in the world. However, they are also building a core team based out of Silicon Valley to really empower their entire uh, talent base. On top of that, we're also very excited about space tech. Uh, recently, we also invested in a company called Space Perspective, which is one of the first companies that takes human all the way to space two hours up in, with an air balloon the size of a football stadium. And also, you can come down, uh, host your you know, bachelor, bachelor at parties, and also taking your grandma to space, for example. What we're excited about this technology is the founding team. They have over 30 years of experience at NASA. Um, Jane Pointer, the founder and CEO, actually spent two and a half years in space. Um, her previous two companies, one of which is a company that covers space suits, and the second one was focused on B2B satellites. Next, we can talk about uh, what are the market drivers for this business um, and for this industry. First of all, there's proliferate. Data proliferation uh, will be seeing exponential growth as opportunity for various ways. Uh, to give you a sense, in the domain of voice that AI, we have seen companies um, such as Modulate. What they've done is uh, automatically detect deep fakes companies that create artificial voices, uh, bad actors in the internet. How do you moder modulate uh, companies that are, you know, for example, on um, Discord, um, Meta, what are the good and bad players and how do you help parental control? Next, we're looking at um, computational power. As I mentioned, we're very excited about chip making companies across the semiconductor industry. And lastly, about investments and funding. Uh, not surprisingly, over $18 billion have been deployed uh, in the last few years in artificial intelligence type of companies. We're excited to invest in AI companies that are focused on sales enablement and also uh, customer service. As I mentioned before, um, the investments in AI has gone from $2 billion to $18 billion in the last few years, and federal government is actually one of the largest players funding AI companies. 
Uh, to give you a sense, some companies uh, we have invested so far are working with uh, government sectors such as South Korea, uh, of course the Saudi government, and we're looking at how to create a truly cross-border collaboration between governments. Um, we are looking at an unmanned aircraft business that's now taking orders from one of the largest um, Express, uh, Shinfeng Express, which is basically enabling e-commerce companies to transport goods from Asia to the U.S. and back and forth with unmanned aircraft. To wrap this up, I know we have a very short session here. Um, some of the companies you know that we have invested in the AI sector, which covers visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making, and language translation. We're also very excited to look at uh, how many of these um, capabilities are actually combining. How do you uh, conduct simultaneous sim simulation of translation, but also with chat GPT? So to talk about the rise of generative agents, uh, we see that you know, the future of Work, the future of work has, will be transformed tremendously. With ChatGPT, now students are learning with um, artificial intelligence versus uh, a, a, a real you know, human teacher. In the workspace, we also see many people are using ChatGPT to change the way they work in marketing and sales. We just came out of uh, MIT's AI demo day uh, in Silicon Valley, and we noticed that for many of the companies building next-gen companies, the agents, how we're going to actually help not getting rid of human, but working alongside AI to improve the productivity of our work. To give you a sense, uh, some of the companies that we're very excited and also co-investing with some of the largest AI-focused um, deep tech companies, we're looking at businesses that, number one, utilizes ChatGPT um, in every aspect of life. In learning, we have seen with Khan Academy, many of you probably know about, they have millions of users learning uh, how to solve math equations. However, today, instead of you doing uh, asynchronous learning uh, through you know, Zoom or over a chatbot, now you can actually use ChatGPT to figure out you know, how to solve these math equations. On top of that, how to learn a new language instead of Duolingo. Now you have artificial intelligence-powered robot that helps you learn new languages. Next, uh, we're going to quickly go through some of the next-gen transportation companies we have invested in. Uh, of course, self-driving car is a topic de jour. Uh, we have also invested in companies that power supersonic, hypersonic jets. So to give you a sense, many of you have seen the demo from Boom Supersonic, probably Blake was one of our first um, investments. Boom Supersonic aims to create the first supersonic jet since Concord. And the reason why we believe in this company is because Conquer was created really for uh, the ultra wealthy. Very few people can afford a 20,000 ticket to go from US to Asia, US to Saudi. But today, they're looking to create a first product that allows people to pay $6,000 to fly across with five or six hours um, in between. At least for me, as someone who travels 200 days a year, I would really appreciate to have a supersonic jet that takes you across the world. Next, we also look at every uh, other, uh, other aspect of space travel. Uh, for example, I mentioned about space perspective, but many of the uh, investments we're looking at actually is creating a new supply chain for space. So we look at a one company called Phase 4. What they've done is using a new material, iodine, as a, really the nanomaterial for the thruster, which is, powers the engine in creating satellite businesses. So what's going on with the Ukraine war is actually very difficult to secure the type of uh, natural resource required to create the thruster for the satellites. So they've discovered, instead of um, sourcing these products from China and Ukraine, they've now found a, a evident and abundant iodine in states in America where they can create now a new type of engine that empowers space and satellite. I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to leave this part for a Q&A. If there's any questions, please raise your hand.
Okay, well, thanks for everyone for having me here. Very glad to be here. Thanks very much.